Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhay. Welcome to another edition of Pinoy Power Hawaii. I am your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson. Uh, we want to first thank uh, the wonderful staff of Think Tech Hawaii for uh, giving us the opportunity to come to your homes every Tuesday at 12 noon. Today we have a special guest and uh, she is within our mission to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and empower. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor, Marissa Dipasupil Kearns. Welcome to our show, Marissa. Thank you, Amy, for inviting me to be here. And I would like to thank the people from Think Tech Hawaii for this opportunity for letting us, you know, put out our message to our people in Hawaii and of course, our Filipino Kababayan as well. Oh, so our show is done in uh, Itaglish. Oh, okay. Uh, pwede tayong magsalita ng Ilocano, Tagalog at saka English. Yeah. So um, it is about empowerment, and I know you have a lot of you of empowerment in you. But before we go into uh, our main topic for today, um, we would like to know a little bit more about. Uh, Marisa Dipasupil Kearns. Kearns. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would like to start with my humble beginnings, you know, as what everybody knew now, know now that I was born and raised in the Philippines. My parents are business owners from the beginning. Like my mother came mm -hmm. from a company that uh, manufacture or, or produce or make ice cream in the Philippines and her parents, oh. yeah, her, her parents supply Malacanang from 1939. Sorbetes? Till, Sorbetes till 1956. The brand name was Selecta. Ay, nako. Yes, the, my, my mom, yeah, my mom's the, the eldest out of the family uh -huh. of 12. There were 12. So my mom remember pretty much everything, and she's still around. My mom's 93 years old now. 93 and, and still yeah, going. 93, yeah. They used to also own a trucking company, mm -hmm. a transport company. What they did, they refurbished some military buses, mm -hmm. and they used it for passenger uh, transport. So they called it Kapalaran Transit. Kapalaran, uh, Kapalaran. katulad ng uh, jeepney, or oh, mas... Oh, no, it's ba their buses. Oh, their bus, bus, like school mas bus. Malaki. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, uh -huh. So that's my mother's side. My father's side, he was a farmer. Mm -hmm. When he was a young teenager, he joined the Bataan Death March, you know, those guerrillas. So he's one of those guys that, that joined and, and helped the country, helped the, the citizens, the people, the um, Americans and his relatives and other people, of course, that went into the, mm -hmm. the march, went into the camps. So my dad was one of the guerrillas and it was a hard work. He told us a lot of the stories about that, you know, and after that, he became a sorbetes uh, vendor. He was working with my mom's uh, parents' mm -hmm. company, so that's how Promoting they Promoting Selecta. That's correct. So knowing my dad came mm -hmm. from really like, you know, I would say farmer, you know, he was a farmer. Mm -hmm. Both of them combined, they're really work hard, you know, really working hard people. That's what I can offer to the public. I mm -hmm. came from the people that really work hard from they were like really young people with the war, with I would say being the parents are mm -hmm. business people. So I have very good upbringing, you know, got morals, got values, culture. We try to keep that as much as we can, you know, transferring it to our kids nowadays, you know, in the generation mm -hmm. completely different, having the millennials. They never had to go through that. So I'm very proud of our generation. Of course, now it's different, you know, technology, the way people social, right, it's completely mm -hmm. different. But having that foundation I have in life, I was so grateful and so proud, you know, and, and flattered that I have parents like this. And even now, my mom got to see all of this where I'm mm -hmm. at now. But I was very, very excited. She's always been in my, you know, political campaign. You know, she's on a wheelchair. She's sign wave and all that stuff. But uh, knowing I'm, I'm, again, I'm a strong, I have a strong foundation as mm -hmm. a Filipino, proud Filipina. I would rather put this strength, this foundation all the way, move forward to the next future, next generation, and contribute and make a big difference. And I think that's the other things that other, well, other people in, mm -hmm. in, in our community doesn't have. I have different stuff to offer. I have different culture values to offer into our mm -hmm. community. And I'm always being a, a reformer, a fighter, you know, a, a person that understand the business, 
because I'm always been in business since I got here. I'm in public sector for the last 31 years, and I'm always been in transportation and logistics. And now I'm doing all kinds of stuff. You know, try to bring more. I would say business into my shoulder so I can mm -hmm. show my kids, other people, how things can be like, you know, prosper through hard work, of course, great effort in everything you do. So knowing now, I'm, I'm again, I'm very strong with military. I'm married to a retired Air Force. Mm -hmm. And of course, my dad is Bataan Det March Guerrilla, my mom's business owner. I love where I came from. It's something that a lot of people doesn't have. I'm very, very uh, fortunate. I'm blessed all the way up to now. You know, I came from a poor family. My, my mom only had like seventh grade uh, schooling. My dad's like barely like seven or six, mm -hmm. you know, but they both work hard for us because we were 12 too. I'm, I'm tw you know, 11 siblings. Wow. So it's very hard. And my dad passed away when I was 14 years old. So my mom cannot be there all the time with, you know, to oversee us. Mm -hmm. So I learned that. I have that, you know, the, the perseverance. I'm always been very competitive in anything I do. I compete. I, I, I pretty much master what I know in life. You know, being a salesperson, I'm always on the front. I'm always the person that never, mm -hmm. never really feel like you know I'm I'm timid or I'm shy. No, not me. I, I you know I'm, I'm just in, listening to your story, and yeah. I'm in awe. Uh, yeah, it just, it's uh, too much. You uh, know, if you see my my autobiography, you know, online, you know, www.marissa.com, uh -huh. I have my bio over there. And I have it's probably a me. manifesto of uh, over oh, yeah. 100 pages. <laughs> Balitang America was surprised. Oh, we should put you in. That's why I've always been in there. You know, Balitang America. Mm -hmm. I'm worldwide. I became like, you know, even local kids. Kamehameha students are like going into my website. They said they were really inspired. And it's mm -hmm. just too bad, you know, we were never really like part of the debate. The debates like recently that happened uh, from their school so I, i'm very fortunate i'm giving back to the community without mm -hmm. even in the office i don't have to be there because i'm not a politician i'm a business owner i'm a mother you know I'm, I'm 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 community you know besides being community organizer i'm a community mm -hmm. person you know so well listening to your uh, story and your trials your experiences in life uh the struggles and uh, of course, the success that comes along with that. Um, uh, no wonder you can't wait to uh, be a public servant. Uh, and your run for uh, le the lieutenant governor office will give you the chance to uh, uh, showcase or to let the, everyone know that uh, you have the makings of a great uh, lieutenant governor. So um, let me. Uh, Ask you also that uh, uh, along with uh, these experiences, these life experiences that you you have had, to empower you to make you a better uh, a servant uh, for the people. Uh, what is that one thing that uh, would stand out when uh, people hear of your name, Marisa Di Pasupil Kearns? Okay, we're talking about, I would say, community service. I'm always being with people that really want it. I'm supporting 100% people that would like to make change, challenge other people, discuss things, and be a part of the community to, to make a big difference. You know, I'm that person that I look at it, I'll study, I'll reach out, and thank all the people that's, that really want to make a difference for everybody, not just one for themselves, not for one organization, because Hawaii grew so big. I've been here 31 years, and we got a lot of a lot of stuff to do, because right now with the leadership we have, I don't think they really understand the business, running a business, and that's what we're lacking in our state. You know, we have people been in office for 20 something years, have not touched any of the business, you know, information or business. They don't have any business acumen, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. They don't understand where we're coming from as business owners. They don't understand. Where the rest of, 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 I would say, earnings that these people are going to pour out before they started taxing. So I have a different outlook mm -hmm. in life. I'm not a politician. I'm a business, I'm a business owner. owner. I've always been a standalone business owner. And I, I acquired company. You know, I, I bought a trucking company. With my own money that I, I worked for, mm -hmm. I used to work for Emory Worldwide, UPS, 500 Fortune companies. I was a product of a boardroom. Mm -hmm. for, for a national companies. I sat with these big honchos, making decisions, making strategies. 
how can we compete in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of that, mostly private. So understanding the legislature, I don't think you're gonna need a scientific study to do that. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Mostly reading, understanding, but right now, I don't think those legislators understand what's the final, what's the result, what's the bottom line of those mm -hmm. bills that they're introducing. Who's gonna get affected? Who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? You know what so I'm in saying? other words, your business experience will uh, give you an advantage and an edge. Way, uh, way advantage. Uh -huh. Way more, way more. Because you understand exactly how the numbers line up in order to yeah. be productive and If it's a program, successful. you know, yeah, you just gathered so much millions of dollars for one program, okay? Who's going to benefit for this program? Who's really going to need this thing? How long the program's going to last, right? Where's the money going to go? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to show our people that really pour up and earn to make that money to that program make sense. Mm -hmm. You're always looking for the bottom line. If you're a business owner, is this really a bottom line that we're going to get? Is this really the, the thing that we really want to accomplish for a lot of the people? Not just one. You cannot cherry pick that you, you as a government would like to subsidize. Government should, should not be subsidizing anybody. It should be open market, you know, from shipping to bottled water supply. Mm -hmm to, I would say, you know, all of this, like the refineries shutting down some of the areas of their refineries. You know, we gotta open the market. What do you think McDonald's coming up with mm -hmm. like value meal, right? Those value meals they have, because they have Burger King, they have Jack in the Box, they have Wendy's. Mm -hmm. The more we have people, you know, enterprise, businesses in the market, the mm -hmm. better for the consumers. They got to afford those value meals. And that's what we're lacking in our, in our state. Well, I believe in uh, healthy competition, too, rather than I agree with you when it comes to, uh, um, you know, competition is uh, better than uh, having just one person rule and having a monopoly, you know, uh, because it uh, does a lot to stimulate the economy and it spreads uh, the money around more evenly so that it's uh, fair competition, fair game for everyone. Yeah, I want Hawaii to be a, f a business friendly state. I don't want Hawaii to be like a sanctuary city. That's the Hawaii Act uh, 172, 2016, they went ahead and, and uh, passed that in 2015, 2016, it became a law. And that's the thing that really our legislator are missing to let, in, you know, to let the people know and inform that, oh yeah, we're gonna bring all these 50,000 illegal aliens or un, un, you know, undocumented immigrants mm -hmm. into our state. You know, how are we gonna be taking care of these people? How are we gonna feed these people? How are we gonna house them? You know, that's what happened to us two, three years ago. You know, that's why all the housing is like nobody could afford it. And what happened? About 150,000 people fled the state. They left. Mm -hmm. And of course, they said, oh, our, our population never really, you know, changed. It's because we have these Micronesians coming in. And again, that's another, you know, millions of dollars that we're going to have to take care of those people. Plus the illegal immigrants, you know, mm -hmm. the Latinos, the Mexicans, who knows? They're all over here because we have no borders. And I don't think our governor understand that, you know, we can't bring all these people. We cannot afford to be, you know, to be like a, a sanctuary city. There's no way. I understand where you're coming from, Marissa, but, uh, you know, especially Hawaii is known as the melting pot capital of the world, uh, being that uh, we uh, welcome all uh, ethnic, ethnic group to okay. come to our borders. But... Uh, there is a big but on that, and uh, you can agree or disagree with me that, uh, you know, when it comes to immigration, we have to uh, do it in a legal manner where uh, my family, uh, my grandfather, waited 15, almost 20 years before he could finally come and be re reunited wow. with his family. Yeah. And that's a long time to wait. And um, I know that you will agree with me that it should be a fair game. It should be a yeah. fair competition where um, everybody have to wait their turn, you know? They, yeah, you cannot cut it, the line, no. It, true. Th that's not right, that's not fair, because I have Filipino friends that, you know, me, I never even gonna even think about bringing all my siblings here. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually, I'm probably gonna figure out how to bring them in because my dad served the Bataan Debt March. And again, our federal government cannot be handpicked who can come here, who can get paid 15,000. I don't need the money. Okay. I want my family. You Hold know what that I'm thought for a moment because uh, immigration is a very uh, tec technical issue, technical matter. Uh, 
We will come back. We need to take a quick break. Our guest today on the Pinoy Power Hawaii is the Republican um, candidate for Lieutenant Governor Marissa Dipasupil Kearns. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Welcome back to Pinoy Power Hawaii. I am your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson. And uh, today we are uh, having uh, a very uh, healthy debate on uh, the economy, taxes, um, competition, and also immigration. So uh, we are all over, <laughs> all over the place when it comes to topic. But uh, there are some things that uh, we want to zero in because that's your platform. Yes. Uh, talagang yan ang um, platform mo, di ba? Yeah, so, I'm, I'm an immigrant mm -hmm. myself, you know, because yes. I got here in 87 and I became citizen in 92. And then about six months after that, four months after that, I brought my mom here. So just me and my mother. My mom's still alive. She's 93 years mm -hmm. old. So I took the right path. I did not violate the law. Mm -hmm. I waited for my turn till I bring my mom here. So it's unfair for others that's been on the line for many, many years, especially our Filipino kababayan. Yeah, they've been yeah. waiting. And all of a sudden, we got these zone, thousands of people mm -hmm. came into our state, and now where are they at? They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. These illegal aliens are all over. They're using our hospitals, they're using our schools, our roads, our highways, our social services. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna have to compete with these guys with jobs. It, oh. it, it's, it's a lot of things that these legislators and our state leadership don't understand. They do not understand. They're gonna get eat out alive with all this compensation, with all this, mm -hmm. you know, amount of services. Look at our DMV office lines, five to six hours, because most of the people that are on the line are illegal aliens. You know, it, it, it's constant. So mm -hmm. I wish I get elected. And that's one of the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to have to really. What would like, you do when you get elected? What's the first thing? Same thing would? in the mainland. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to house these people to care for mm -hmm. them. We have no money. We couldn't even afford mm -hmm. taking care of our own homeless. We so couldn't afford those they, small young families that try to survive here. Mm -hmm. And now others, they can just come here for free. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. Uh huh. So your uh, solution to. Um, uh, that uh, situation is to send them back to send where, them back. where they're from. We have to send them back mm -hmm. because we don't really have the capability or resources to care for them. Mm -hmm. And it's a big mistake. I want, I want to repeal that law. That's Act 172. Mm -hmm. you it's already a law to exactly, uh, allow yes. them, but you want to... Yeah, uh, I want to put that into the public. Mm -hmm. Have the public, have the people Let them vote decide. For yes, exactly. Yeah. Not the legislators. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm against with Con Con. Because they have the control, they can do whatever they want, and they're going to eat us alive. Mm -hmm. and well, I hear you. Um, uh, as a taxpayer, you know, uh, it isn't fair that we pay so much taxes, and these taxes are used to uh, just support those that have not worked for it. I you know, well, so uh, uh, how could we afford to take care of additional dependents when we can't even take care of uh, yung mga home homeless uh, natin? Yeah, uh, talagang problema jan, right in our backyard. I agree. Hindi tayo uh, kaya na alagain yung mga tao. We can't care for mm -hmm. them at all. Yeah, we cannot. So ano problema? Eh. Yeah, ang, ang mga legislators they never really thought about it that there's there's mm -hmm. a big big. I would say debt that's going to come to us. That's the reason they've been. Well, we're already in debt. Oh, big time! You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You look so, at our state employees' mm -hmm. uh, pension; they're unfunded, 25 billion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Look at the city. Let go like that. Three billion dollars. What you know? Unfunded or what? Just too many. Look mm -hmm. at the rail. That's mm -hmm. 10 billion dollars. 
we're talking monumental debts. Yeah. You know, and then like, they have all these new bills that they introduced, mm -hmm. SB 2922. The state created their own property tax. That's illegal. Can't do that. We can only have one property tax. They say they need money for, for mm -hmm. education. I think they're wrong. They're completely wrong. I tell you right now, this is one stats, one metrics that I got from my daughter. When my son graduated from Kapolei High School in 2014, their aptitude, you know, I would say their, comp, you know, their, their, uh, their uh, aptitude in math mm -hmm. was only 45%. It means the entire school, only 45% can do math. Their comprehensive is like mm -hmm. really bad. Now my daughter graduated this past May, mm -hmm. 2018. She called me, mom, guess what? We have to stay one more hour because the principal was upset because he found out our math comprehensive mm -hmm. aptitude not... down to 25%. And I don't think whoever requesting this legislator, the legislators want money for education. Where are they gonna put the money? Look at our kids. Our kids mm -hmm. are failing. And by the way, look at Iggy. Iggy sent his kids, his three kids, to Punahou. And now they're in college in the mainland. I think that's wrong. We, we cannot continue running our state like this. Mm -hmm. They're the one trying to make education number one. I don't think they have faith in our education mm -hmm. system. Otherwise, they, he would have yeah, uh, sent his running, kids yeah. to a public school. Exactly. Right. What is it? Like? Pro City High mm -hmm. School or whatever. Uh, a elementary school. Come on, you know, give me a break. Why do that? You're the leader of the state. You should be the model. It doesn't matter to have scholarship, just that like the moral value on who you are, that running the state, making your kids going to the high end, you know. I might as well, that's why you elect me, everybody can go Punahou. We'll go ahead and have the, the school choice. I'll take the $12,000, if the parents want their kids to Punahou, boom, they just pay for the difference. They can go to Punahou. You know, I want them to, to do the same thing. But that's not where the majority lies, yeah? That's what uh, you think. Even, even the state employees, they, you know, some teachers, they take their, their kids to private mm -hmm. school because they have no faith with our public yeah. school system. But what I'm saying is to that, change we, that. Should, we should uh, concentrate and uh, focus on what we can do for the majority, which is the public. Yeah, that's why it's mm -hmm. good that we have charter schools. That's good that parents are doing their mm -hmm. homeschooling. That's perfect. It's better because Parents and the kids, they need to have a bonding to avoid those homeless, those drugs. Mm -hmm. Do you know, seven out of 10 kids or school uh, uh, students, seven out of 10, okay, they either try drugs, they're using drugs. That's why, what, 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 you know what I'm saying? Are you gonna continue take, taking your kids to public school? It's dangerous. You're lucky if your kids graduated with no any, you know, and drugs. And that's probably why uh, a lot of uh, people that can afford send their children to Yeah, they, they try uh, to avoid the public school. To avoid yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. And again, because no well, one's policing anymore. No one really mm -hmm. looking at the whole picture. Where do we go from here? How come myself, I'm a little, I'm not sending my kids. No, you stay where you at. Mm -hmm. Liberal City, I, I, live in, I live in Kapule, I live in Mililani. You know, I know Mililani is doing good. They're number one high school right now, which is the best ever happened to our state. There's somebody that's taking the lead. There's mm -hmm. smarter kids out there because they, that's a diverse too. Because Mililani have like the military kids from the mainland, like same thing with Kapolei. Because some of them, they graduated only in their junior. And it's because they came from Florida, their military families, mm -hmm. because my son's telling me this, that's their classmates, right? From, from Florida, and my son was told, hey, guess what, our Kapolei school, our math is like two years behind compared to Florida. Mm -hmm. So it's just like yeah. it tells you right there. So we need to uh, take a look yeah. and uh, overhaul our public school You can't system. centralize okay. and you can't have a nice standardized, higher up programs mm -hmm. for the students. And that can tell you, if Iggy cannot even get involved with the school with the education, he need to get out. He need to get out because I can't stand in front of him and tell him, my kids graduated magna cum laude. At the Kapolei High School. I'm, I'm proud of the Kapolei High mm -hmm. School. They made my kids. So public you know, schooling has worked for yeah, your children. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, but, but the thing is, he's a model. He's, he's, he's a governor. He's got to put his mouth, you know, his money where his mouth is. But don't do that. Don't, don't, don't just pick and choose. Oh, okay. yeah, you get money. But we, we can spend a lot of time talking about education, which is, uh, I agree, it's very, very important uh, to build. Uh, a solid foundation for uh, our future. Uh, now, you have this thing about privatized rail now. Why do you think uh, it should be uh, uh, privatized? From the start, it should have been privatized because there's no ballot, there's no check and balance, there's no accountability. 
what's going on right now, all the money that they collected from our taxes, it goes directly to heart, directly to the to the mayor, mm -hmm. and now governor getting involved with it, right? The legislators. So it's an entire state project now. It's not going to be the city. Mm -hmm. It's the state. So if it's privatized, you feel that there'll, there'll be a better way of tracking? Exactly. Or, um, there's, there's a border right there. Mm -hmm. There's somebody going to check. It's just like when Mayor Fossey was around. The, the city was losing money. Mm -hmm. People, employees are stealing the buses, are stealing the equipment over there, right? They're taking the buses and then they're painting them. All of a sudden, he ran out of, like, what, assets. Mm -hmm. You know, the city is caving down, running out of money. So the best thing he did, our Mayor Fassi, to privatize the, the Oahu bus, right? That way people are more accountable. Yeah, exactly, or, because mm -hmm. OTS now, what they do is, you know, they receive all the equipment from, from the city and they do the inventory, they manage how to run the, the, the bus, you know, mm -hmm. they hire and fire, make sure it makes sense that every time they get the new budget for the bus, they make sure they, they, they're taking care of how to run it, to operate it, what's the bottom line, you know, all those stuff that they understand. So mm -hmm. not just the city, the heart can just Take the money and run away like like rail, runaway rail that the money going down, flashing the toilet. We don't know where the rest of the money. If they pay Q with like what, 550 mm -hmm. million? But technically how much we spent? Almost like $3 billion. Where's the rest of the money? That's why mm -hmm. we need an audit. Okay. We need to audit the mayor and the heart. Be accountable. Yes. All right. Uh, the next thing is, how do you feel about... Uh uh, the U.S. government continuing to support uh, those nations that really uh, uh, want to destroy us or uh, hate us, and yet we continue to uh, send aid uh, to those countries. I see. I seen our President Trump uh, kind of like downsizing that mm -hmm. that side of the. You know, they, he did something with Palestinians. I think mm -hmm. he cut a little bit of it. I think he's completely cut it. Because right in Hawaii, okay, you know, politics is always local. Hawaii, we need all that money. We need all those federal funds, mm -hmm. you know, like funding our, our airports, you know what I'm saying? Because we can't do any more, like, infrastructure. Apparently, if you want infrastructure, if you want to build a brand mm -hmm. new uh, highways and roads, the federal will, will, will give you 80% of the cost. Mm -hmm. You're only going to come up with the 20. So I want what he, I really like uh, President Trump, what he's doing. He's cutting all those those bloated. foreign aids. Yeah, all those fat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because look at now. Look at in Germany. The pork We're in the barrel. We're Germany. Yeah. Germany brought in all these illegal aliens. Now what? Sweden? Now what? They're all like having issues with their illegal aliens. They're suffering with all the from refugees. Um, yes. that decision of uh, allowing the borders exactly. to it's uh, not be good. open. It's not good. Okay. Even though, you know, even though we're friends, but hey, you cannot just completely subsidize them for many more years. Well, we're run out of time, and uh, thank you, Marissa Dipasukil Kearns, for taking the time to uh, discuss some of these uh, issues that are really affecting our economy and uh, for better Hawaii. So, thank you for sharing your ideas and your thoughts, and hopefully, uh, we have done our job to uh, enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower you all. Makababayans. Thank you again, and please tune in for another edition of Pinoy Power Hawaii. I am your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson, thanking you for joining us. Maraming salamat po, aloha, and mabuhay.